What up, Ungors? Bray Sham and Tay up in this mood. Um, don't know where it went. Have no idea what happened to it. The first clip of this video is gone, baby, gone. So I'm going to show you right now the colors that I use. It's only two steps, really, because um, I took my time. And as you all know, for those of you who've seen my live painting tutorials before, um, they usually take the most time. So it's the skin and the fur. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint the skin with... Bugman's Glow, it's the uh, new pre-Talarn Flesh, it's the new skin color, and um, you're gonna notice when we cut the next video that, we cut the next clip in the video that the result you get is very red, reddish. So we're working our way to this more, um, more, how shall we say, pale skin color than that red flushed, um, more, uh, just darker color. And then we're going to be painting the fur with the new, it's the new Calthin. Mornfang is the new Calthin. And uh, Mornfang Brown. So the fur on the legs, the fur on the upper legs, the hair, the goatee on the goat man. And um, there are also like little tufts of fur on the forearm and all down the back. So you want to paint all of that with Mornfang Brown. And then, uh, and then you'll get to where we are at the start of the next video. So, or at the start of the next clip in the video. So, I hope that was helpful and um, happy painting with your Beastman Gore. Alright, so now we are going to get into uh, the horns and bone colors. So, there, a lot of these, I mean, they're they're different in that uh, most of these, I think just about all of these figures have their, like, bone ornamentation in different areas and um, I think this Beastman Gore kit was one of the first that was really uh, one of the first kits in Warhammer released in recent years that really focused on uh, the torso and the legs being together along with the Skaven Ushati bone, I mean Rakar flesh first and um, they kind of started doing this a while back with the Empire State Troopers, but they really emphasized in these models each of the torsos and legs being uh, different. Having generally the same pose, but I mean different in the way of the way <laughs> the way their ornamentation is all the different bits and doodads that are actually on the model that you don't have a choice about being on it. Like with other models, you could um, choose whether or not to, to add something. Like the thing that can pop up, the, the thing that pops up on my head most immediately because I'm doing a project is uh, Space Marines or Chaos Space Marines where you've got all these extra knives and pouches and um, ammo packs and um, things that hang off the waist and it's up to you or and grenades too and it's up to you whether or not you want to um, add those to your model with beastmen like with the Empire and Skaven troops um, or with the state troops Empire state troops you don't really have a choice. The stuff comes already on the model. And I think that's an interesting, to me, that's an interesting design concept. It's interesting to see how different designers um, no one designer will be like, I want to give the player the freedom to choose what he puts on his model and he could have just regular old plain Jane space marine with none of that extra stuff on it or you could be totally kit bashed out and um, not even kit bashed but in the same frame have everything you need to make a space marine that looks like he's you know going out for a very long term deep so what I'm looking for, long-term, deep deployment.
personally, I'm... I think either one of those styles is okay. I, I don't really have a preference, because as a painter first, I could see how, you know, if you just want to get these models on the board, you don't really care about all the extra bits and bobs. You're also going to be painting the um, hoofs, the hooves, as Igor would say. Next, uh, we're going to paint the wood, so weapons, shields, stuff like that, dryad bark.
we're gonna do um, bolt gun metal for the new lead voucher for the uh, iron bolts. Gun metal. <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't noticed, I just woke up and um, that's why my voice is a little groggy and I'm just kind of getting into it. But you know, there's nothing better than starting your lazy Sunday painting. Now it's like, oh, I'm gonna get this done before I get started into my Night Lord stuff. Uh, you've got iron bands. You should have some iron doodahs on your shields. Maybe on the outside, but definitely on the inside. So paint what you can reach and any mistakes you make you can just go back over later. And I'm also going to paint crude little eight-pointed star talisman here around the neck. And the uh, little pieces of armor he's wearing in the front. Yeah, that's good. So, my, um, my friends, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint some Balthazar gold. So it's up to you to determine what you're going to paint um, as brass. For me, I'm going to get the scales down here. One of my favorite parts about starting or building upon an already existing army in my collection is coming up with the stories for them. Your own personal, um, you know, unofficial fluff, I guess. And when I was thinking about my beastmen, my little beastmen raiding force, and I thought, oh, cool, cool background would be that they are. Um, that they are former Middenheim troops that have been transformed by Zinch, which is why they have um, blue scraps.
like loose scrap. Speaking of those, the fang, and this is only if you want to copy my Tzinch, um former Middenheim humans. I think that kind of follows the uh, grim, dark Warhammer setting. That these were all once humans. And an even more tragic kind of thing could be that Middenheims who are very proud and uh, they're not arrogant, but they're very they're very proud people. I would uh, go even further and say that a cool piece of fluff would be if my Middenheim, former Middenheim troops, these current beastmen who were transformed by Zinch, are given um, or are retaining some spark of their former humanity, even though they're completely, uh, almost like degenerated into animals. They have some part of their subconscious that remembers what it's like to be a human, even though the memories are very vague and very, um, very unfocused, like only in their dreams or um, in very, very fleeting moments of lucidity. They remember that they had names and that they had families and um, all that stuff, which is why they kind of cling to these vestiges of their former humanity, like the blue scraps of their old uniforms or, uh, you know, stuff like that. And that is why, uh, in order to motivate these guys, Zinch gives them dreams of their former humanity and how to regain their former humanity by doing his bidding. Oh, it's so fluffy, I love it. Okay, um, what are we doing now? We are going to paint some... Yeah, we're gonna paint the belt. Oh, we're also gonna paint the fang color onto their uh, gauntlets, if you can get to them. I foolishly uh, glued this guy's shield down at his side instead of up in front of him, and uh, hence I'm not able to really reach the inside of it. either Chaos Black or Abaddon Black. We're going to paint the necklace. The eyeballs, if you can get into them. Oh yeah, if your guys any other interesting things like this eye patch. I think we're just about ready to get into the washes.
actually have to uh, finish painting his belt, I realized. Okay, so the belt is going to be in Rackard flesh as well. Okay, next step we are going to do is we are going to take Bane Blade Brown and we're going to highlight some of the wood. So the shield is the most obvious piece. So um, the thing I found with Bane Blade Brown is like it's just a really thin watered down uh, Camry Brown. So I kind of use it in the same way that I would have used my old Camry Brown uh, sometimes. There are other things that I can't do with it, like I can't rim the base with it anymore because it's just too thin. It won't uh, cover very well. But I can do I can do some good highlights with it. For those of you interested in starting a Beastman army, if you're watching this and you're like, why would I ever want to collect these guys, um, then I would say they are they are a hard army from what I've learned from my friends, talking to my friends who play Beastmen locally. They're a hard army to really um, get or master, uh, but they're a fun army and they're very rewarding when, as with any army, when you have a whole painted herd of them tromping around the battlefield, they're very fun, they have some very unpredictable things that they can do, and uh, if you give them that Wissens Wild form, then uh, they could be absolutely menacing on the table, which is pretty cool. There. Yeah, Dryad Bark is just, and, and I found the old Scorched Brown, they were just too dark. You could keep the uh, Scorched Brown showing through as the, as the wrapping around the handle of your weapon. Like my guy's axe here has a, has like this hand, handle made out of cloth, so we'll keep that as Scorch Brown, but in general, I think this lighter wood color is more awesome. Okay, next. Uh, before we get into the washes, we're going to lighten up the skin. Cadian Flesh Tone is the new Talarn Flesh. I kind of wish they made it a base color, 
very much I wish that because having to paint it over Bugman's Glow is like reminds me of the old um, technique I had to do where I had to paint my gold and bronze metallics over Calvin Brown like the Calvin Brown isn't really ever going to be seen but it's just that under that undercoat So thanks for spending the time with me guys. I, I realize this video is running long. Sorry about that. Um, if you have me playing in the background, that's awesome while you're painting. I love it when people say, oh yeah, we have you in the background while I'm, while I'm doing my own thing. Like that really, that is really cool. Makes me feel like every once in a while I should add in stuff like yeah so you're gonna be painting this Katie and flesh tone oh wow that's really nice I like what you did there with your uh, that thing you're painting looks really good <laughs> I really like what you did with that insert hobby project that you're working on So this is kind of like my technique for, if you watch my How to Paint a Savage Orc video, where we're just building up the layers. You want to keep that Bugman's glow, a hint of it anyway, in the folds, in the recesses. But in general, this Cadian flesh tone is going to be dominant color. And this isn't even our final our final color. Once we get to the Kislev flesh next, uh, that's going to be our our highlight. Probably wait to get to that until after the wash. Let's paint all this on and then we'll wash it. I'm gonna skip ahead so we can get to the watches. Okay, we're back, and now we're gonna get into the shading. So, first things first, we are going to take some Agrax Earth Shade, which is the majority shading color. We're gonna paint everything but the cloth and the skin. So all the fur, all the oh yeah, I, I um found some stone totems that I thought. I would paint uh, Dawnstone Gray. Any gray will work. I use Dawnstone Gray. It's like the new Codex Gray. Uh, so that's what I did there. Can you tell I had a soda? I am much more... Um, what's the word? Energetic now. I'm like that Geico commercial with the pig. I'm not gonna imitate it though, because every time that commercial plays, I get very irritated. And I'm like, ah, shut up, pig. We get it. You're the pig that went wee 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 all the way home. What do you think of those Geico commercials, Igor? Well, I'm rather partial to the talking gecko. I bet.
I find his accent quite charming. So look how beautifully the Agrax Earthshade uh, gets into the the Bane Blade Brown that we just painted on. All by itself, the layer paints I find are quite thick, or uh, once they're on, they they kind of clump really easily, which is why I have to go get some uh, what's that word? Slow something flow. Oh gosh, what is that word? Slow flow. No, that's not it. Paint retardant. Is that it? No. Something else that keeps the paint from drying and kind of something else that kind of thins it down just a little bit. I think they're two different product products. Uh, Rose, you were telling me about that. Ah. Anyways. So while the last video was uploading, I was kind of also looking online, and um, I think a good justification for these guys would be that they were uh, Middenheim, like I said, Middenheim troops that were mutated by Zinch, but I think a great time for that to, to place that little fluff backstory for my Beastmen would be during the time of the um, Storm of Chaos, which is the worldwide campaign setting that Games Workshop did a couple years back. And apparently they're trying to retcon out of the Warhammer universe. Because there's no mention of it in the New Empire book. There's been like slowly receding mentions of it in all the recent army books and then now it's not even mentioned at all in the newest one. So that kind of makes me think they're gonna Cut it. <clears throat> Cut it out completely of the of the fluff. Just kind of sad because I, I I kind of I kind of liked it. Rake land flesh shade for all the skin colors. Oh, doesn't that just evoke that Talar and flesh ogre and flesh? mega combo that was like one of my favorite combos of paints in the last um, the last version of the paint range was the the way you could really t shade and um, make us make skin colors look really realistic and not not only realistic but um, you could alter the way it looks. You could alter how dark the skin was, how tan the skin was, by applying more or less. And um, it took me a while, which is why I didn't really do this video, because I knew how oh, the, the skin of these gores are going to need to be very similar to my old uh, color scheme of Talar and Flesh and then Ogre and Flesh Wash. So I'm really glad this, this stuff works out. It makes me feel like I'm home again. And some people paint their beastmen in like browns. You know, more like real life uh, goats and creatures and stuff. And although that is an option, I kind of like I said, to me the appealing thing about chaos is the fact that it can corrupt and um, just change the most like normal, most human, most uh, unassuming, or or the best things about humans. It will take and it will change and it will corrupt and. It'll mutate it to just this mockery of its former self, and that really, really appeals to me. Last thing, oh, got 
Got a bit of, a bit of the horns. Last thing is we're gonna take the blues. We're gonna shade it with some Drakenhof Nightshade. Now if you're using red, you could easily do a simple uh, color scheme of like Mephiston red or um, you know corn red, depending on how deep you want to go and then just shade with Carabird Crimson and you will get a very similar effect but it'll be more GW compliant I guess you could say and it'll also be just about completely similar to what the Games Workshop color scheme is Sorry, I'm kind of talking in circles here, just trying to make sure that the wash doesn't do anything crazy. Gotta be careful with your washes. Or your shades. Alright, boys and girls. This is a nice place to end off right now. Sorry this video took so long. I can see that it's uh, gonna take a while to upload. We're gonna let this dry. When we come back, we're gonna do some highlighting, final details, and uh, I'll show you how I do the base up to make it look like this, which is a little bit different from my Ogre and Empire um, base work, but uh, yeah, the, the reason I did this, which I'll explain also in the next video, is that I used this kind of green moss looking grass to make it look like they're tromping through the forest, which is the beastman's kind of preferred environment to be in. Chopping down trees, being, being mean old deforesters. Alright, <clears throat> thanks for watching, players. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.